Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician, and today I'm reviewing injuries from some of the worst crashes from the Tour de France of all time. See that there's a crash as well as we rejoin the action now. So right now, we've just completed the first week of the Tour de France 2019. So for those of you who don't know, the Tour de France is a multi-stage bicycle race which is held primarily in France. It usually covers 21 stages over approximately 23 days. Usually, it's made up of 20 to 22 teams of eight riders each. The race usually covers a distance of approximately 2,200 miles or 3,500 kilometers. Now, with a race that covers that much distance over pavement, there are plenty of opportunities for crashes and therefore injuries to occur. Over the years, there have been many dramatic crashes in which riders have been injured. Today, I'm gonna to review some of the more famous crashes and I'm gonna discuss the injuries that the riders who were involved suffered. So before we get to reviewing the videos, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell, because that way you can get notified when we post new content. With that being said, let's get right to watching the videos. So for this first video, this comes from the 1994 Tour de France, and it involves a rider named Laurent Jalambert. So in this first video, we have the sprinters racing towards the finish line. And Jalabert is one of the sprinters on the right-hand side of the path or the left-hand side of the screen for us. And as the sprinters are coming towards the finish line, you can see that there is a police officer who is standing in the road on the left-hand side of the road. Jalabert is sprinting here. So as he is digging hard, he has his head down, looking only at the road immediately in front of him and he doesn't quite see the police officer. And, you guessed it, he collides with the police officer. As Jalabert goes down, several riders who are following him also go down. We can see that as he collides with the police officer, he is thrown over the handlebars directly onto his left side. As he struck the ground with his shoulder first, it should come as no surprise that he suffered a clavicle fracture in addition to fractures of his cheekbones. He also suffered a number of dental injuries. But after that collision, I would say that he's pretty lucky to come away with only having suffered those injuries. So this next one involves Joseba Balotti from the 2003 Tour de France. And in this clip, we can see that Josepa is in front of a group of riders who are traveling on a country road. It appears that the road is wet as it approaches the corner. As Josepa rides around the corner, he loses traction with his back wheel and he fishtails on the bike before being thrown to the ground directly onto his side. He ended up suffering a femur fracture, an electron fracture, and a wrist fracture, all on his right hand side. That means he broke his leg at the level of the thigh, he broke his elbow, and he broke his wrist. Obviously, these injuries took him out of the Tour de France that year, and all of these injuries would require surgical fixation. So this next video is from the 2014 Tour de France, and it involves Mark Cavendish. So this particular accident occurred at a location called Harrogate, and this is a route that involves a stage through a city area. There are barricades on both sides of the street, to ensure that the riders have a clear path down which to travel. And we can see that as the peloton comes down the street, two riders who are at the front, one of whom is Mark Cavendish, fall in the middle of the road. The rider in the dark jersey falls directly over his handlebars onto his right hand shoulder. And we can see the two riders laying in the street as the remainder of the peloton drives by. And in fact, both of these riders are quite lucky to not be struck by any other riders as they lay there in the street. And we can see that as they help him up to the side of the road, he's grasping at his right shoulder. It appears as though the right shoulder is slumped down slightly when compared to the contour of the left. In this particular case, Mark suffered a right shoulder dislocation and he injured both the labrum and some of the ligaments around his shoulder. This injury forced him to retire from the 2014 Tour de France. Okay, so for this next video, this comes from the 2017 Tour de France and it involves a rider named Richie Porte. Now in this particular segment, the riders are traveling downhill on a country road in a mountain stage. So here, the speeds are high, the road surface is poor, and the traction is not that good. And we can see here that as they approach a curve in the road, Richie seems to lose traction and as he attempts to avoid riding into the ravine, he tries to correct to come back on the road and loses control. 
He falls off his bike, but continues to slide across the road into another rider. Now, as we've seen with other riders, the first thing that hit the ground was, of course, his shoulders as he went over the handlebars. But he ended up striking the pavement with his pelvis immediately thereafter. And as you can imagine, throwing yourself into the pavement at a speed of over 70 kilometers an hour is likely going to end up with at least one or more fractures. In this particular collision, Richie suffered both a clavicle fracture and a pelvic fracture. Of these two particular injuries, I would probably say that the pelvic fracture is worse. In fact, it's a lot worse. The clavicle fracture is usually something that will heal in approximately six to eight weeks with either operative fixation or stabilization in a sling or a figure eight splint if it is undisplaced. The pelvic fracture on the other hand, especially if it's in a weight bearing portion of the pelvis, will take between two to three months before it heals. And during that time, Richie will need to remain non weight bearing. Once the fracture has healed radiographically, in other words, once we have taken x-rays to ensure that it has united, then the patient will be allowed to weight bear in a progressive manner until full weight bearing is achieved. This whole process may take between four to five months. So as you can see, this is a much more severe fracture and it takes a lot longer to heal than does a simple clavicle fracture. Okay, so for this next one, we are back to Mark Cavendish. It seems that he's had some bad luck in the Tour de France. And this video comes from the 2017 Tour de France. It involves a collision between Mark Cavendish and Peter Sagan. So in this collision, again, we have a group of sprinters who are sprinting towards the finish line. Mark Cavendish is included in this group of sprinters and he is off to the right hand side of the group. He is sprinting towards the finish line on the right hand shoulder of Peter Sagan. Mark Cavendish attempts to pass Peter on his right hand side. As he does so, we can see Peter Sagan leans over to the right and sticks his elbow out. The only problem with this is that there's no place to go but directly into the barrier. Not only does Mark Cavendish go down, but we can see that one of the riders following behind him not only rides directly over his leg, but he also rides directly over his head. Thank goodness he was wearing a helmet. And in this particular injury, he suffered a scapula fracture. Fractures of the scapula, or the shoulder blade, are common injuries that occur after high energy blunt force trauma to the upper back. Now typically, if a scapula fracture is undisplaced, this is a fracture that we do not need to treat operatively. And even with some degree of displacement, we do not normally fix scapula fractures. The scapula or the shoulder blade is a very thin bone which lays in between two layers of muscles. And as such, it has very rich and robust blood supply from the muscles on both sides. In addition to significant support that will help to stabilize the fracture while it is healing. Scapula fractures usually will heal on the order of six to eight weeks. Normally, we'll keep patients immobilized with a shoulder sling during this time. So this next one comes from the 1991 Tour de France and involves a rider named Jamaluddin Abulaparov. Jamaluddin Abdujaparov. I hope I said his name correctly. Jamaluddin Abulaparov. Yeah. <laughs> But apparently this rider was notorious for being very, very brutal. Abdu had the most homicidal sprinting style in tour history. His nicknames included the Uzbek Express and Abdu Pushimov because he was known to be very liberal with his elbows when riding. So once again, we have a bunch of sprinters who are racing towards the finish line. As with Mark Cavendish in an earlier video, Abdi Japarov tries to go around the right hand side of the pack. There's not really much room here and as his elbows start going and he starts weaving side to side, he ends up driving directly into the barrier on the right hand side of the course. As he rides into the barrier, he of course crashes with his bike flying into the path of several other riders who are riding behind him. And of course, those riders then go down too. First thing to hit the ground was Abdu Jabarov's shoulder with a subsequent injury of his clavicle. 
with a broken collarbone. Abdu went straight to hospital. As you can see with these videos, injuries at the clavicle are quite common. It's the first thing to hit the ground as the riders go over the handlebars and land on their shoulders. Because as you approach the ground, the choices are land on your shoulder, land on your wrist, or land on your head. And generally speaking, landing on your head at 70 kilometers an hour is not a good thing, even if you're wearing a helmet. Knowing that these are the spectrum of injuries that are commonly associated with cycling accidents, it probably makes sense to take time to work on strength, mobility, and flexibility of the wrists and the shoulders. So if you're a cyclist or you know somebody who's a cyclist, be sure to take time to add these exercises into your training regime. I'll provide a link down below in the description for videos on how to perform these exercises. And for this last video, this involves a collision from the 2007 Tour de France involving a rider named Marcus Berger. And in this instance, the peloton is traveling on a country road on a downhill descent. As the peloton streams towards a curve in the road, a dog walks across the roadway directly into the path of the riders. Unfortunately, Marcus Burgart is unable to stop, colliding with the dog directly in its side. Fortunately, neither the dog nor Marcus was injured. He seems to be okay, and that uh, looks like it's Marcus Burgart there. But it does kind of make you wonder why somebody would let their dog walk around when there is a massive race with over 200 cyclists traveling at 70 kilometers an hour flying by. But anyway, Marcus got lucky. So there you have it. Today I've been reviewing injuries from some of the worst crashes from the history of the Tour de France ever. If you enjoyed the content, give us a like and share this video with a friend. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday. Or the Just a flesh wound.